tell me who you represent? Buongiorno, io sono Michele, uh, un uh, caporale maggiore bersaglieri. Um, my name is Mike, uh, I am a um, uh, uh, Lance Corporal, effectively, uh, the Bersaglieri, who are a light infantry and marksman unit from the First World War. Our unit starts in the, uh, effectively, the Victorian period, so the early, uh, uh, the mid 18th, uh, mid 19th century. Uh, they're a light infantry and marksman specialist force. Uh, the thing we, you often see it, particularly uh, in parades nowadays, is you'll see uh, plumes. It's quite a recognisable, instantly recognisable thing you'll see. Uh, originally designed to break up the shape around the infantryman when he's laying on the plains of Napoli and uh, Sardinia. But really, uh, it becomes a point of pride for us. By the start of the First World War, we're still wearing them uh, with the Maroto Mayo. But by October of 1915. So in the First World War, they were still wearing this headdress. Yep, that's right. Yeah. Incredible. But by October of 1915, uh, the feathers go. Uh, we get rid of them because it's too obvious. It's too easy to spot us uh, in the front lines. But they will return by the end of the war, um, representing effectively what's going on in the war in the Alps against the Austrians. So in 1915, in May the Italians surge forward and attempt to take as much land as possible uh, under effectively the, uh, the Allies have said, come join us, you can have this land, okay, fantastic. Um, then they head up and they fight, broadly speaking, in the two main places, the Asonzo Plain and the uh, Anadolum, so which is the Cinque Pass, the five passes. Um, they're too slow on, on, the, on the uptick. The infantry are very, very fast, they, they, they're very aggressive, but their command is, broadly speaking, thin, stodgy, and it's quite slow, and so they can't get out there. So it bogs down into an absolute hellscape nightmare, uh, one of the most beautiful places to die uh, on the mountains against Austrians. You can see Dave over here, uh, he's an Austrian uh, in the cloak there. So um, the, the, the war gear and, uh, and equipment is far less practical than um, the things like the British Army and stuff like that. Uh, who have got much more resources to be able to draw from. Austria and Italy are broadly speaking fairly resource poor countries. Uh, so yeah, you can you can see like it's a very, very different style of warfare. But you're fighting at nearly three and a half kilometers up. Having to yeah, having to drag artillery pieces up, having to use pneumatic drills to cut through um, things like the 52 galleries, Posubio. Uh, you're fighting in glaciers and the Marmalada, you're fighting up on the, up on the hills. And when you're not fighting up on the hills, you're fighting in the plains. Uh, on the flatlands, which is hot and hideous. Did you ski? Uh, we did have ski troops, Alpini, so the Alpine troops were very, very good uh, professional skiers. The same as the Alpine troops, the Austri uh, uh, their Alpine troops were very, very good as well. The Basilieri were not skiers. We had uh, ciclisti, so bicycle troops, so it could allow us to move around quickly. Although, by and large, we're marching everywhere because um, the, the bikes and stuff like that, that kind of bent bogs down. Last march. So, uh, so they can march at 180 paces per minute. Why is that? Uh, it's just the light infantry doctrine, oh, so they can move infantry. very, very fast. And they can also do it whilst, play, whilst, whilst, whilst uh, blowing brass instruments, which is oh, okay. yeah, so, so, it's really quite, so it's quite extraordinary. They've got big gas tanks on them, so uh, <laughs> yeah, so it's quite an extraordinary feat. But um, I got into it because uh, of that. And also, it's use of the word forgotten is such a is a bit of a cliche, but actually, it's a front that very few people talk about. Yeah, I can imagine. Uh, you know, everybody thinks. Well, well, one they think probably. France first, then Belgium, then maybe Gallipoli. But after that, really, this is this is one of the one of the, the toughest fronts for, for everybody concerned. Yeah, I can imagine. So, yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome, thank you. Cheers. I mean, the thing is about this backpack is that because it goes down your back, then it distributes the weight a lot better. Um, so you put that, that sack on there, it's just sort of like gone backwards. So then when you stick this over the top of it, it's like you've got it. So that's just. Yeah, so if you can show Yeah, so bring this down. So that will be just to protect you against uh, bad weather, what yeah. rain. And then you Snow. pop your collar up, and then this would button up onto that. And then you'd have only this section of your face, so your ears and everything all kept nice and warm. Your neck's protected, and pretty much all you've got is here. But green would be for KK, but that means on uh, Lanvier, so it's like homey, yeah. yeah. And then obviously the Eagle Voice. The Germans took the Eagle Voice off the Austrians for World War II. But Egberg, yeah, most of the 
feeling the mountain troops in World War Two actually it's Austrian. Be why the war starts. Yeah. I thought you guys were already at arms. Yeah. Uh, no, we were. The